Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this Coraline themed cake. So let's get right into it. I'm starting out with one 8 inch cake that I've leveled and cut in half and I'm going to be filling that with some Swiss ring buttercream using my small offset spatula. I put that cake in the fridge to chill just so it could be a little more firm before I started to carve. I have my template of Coraline here that I will link below and I'm cutting away just around the face and a little bit of the hair. I'm lining that template up on my cake and I'm going to start cutting around the sides. I had a little more template than cake on one side, so I just used some of my scraps to even that out. I cut the eyes out of my template and if you've seen the movie, you know that fits right into the theme. And using my template, I'm just going around and creating a little divot where the eyes are going to go. To create more of an eye socket, I'm just going around the two eye holes and making them a little bit wider. At this point, I'm going to crumb coat my cake. So with a thin layer of that buttercream, I'm going all the way around. And this is just going to make sure that no crumbs end up in my final ice. I decided that I wanted the edges of the cake to be rounded. Ideally, you would do this step before the crumb coat, but I was actually watching the movie while I was making the cake, so I wasn't paying attention and spaced out. So once you go around with your knife, just pop on another little mini crumb coat and put the cake back in the fridge. Once you can touch your finger to the buttercream and none of it comes off, it's ready for the final ice. I added another layer of buttercream on my cake and went around with my small spatula and just smoothed it out as best I could. I put my cake back in the fridge to chill and once it was firm, I lined up my template again and using my fondant tool, I'm just marking in the nose and the mouth. With some fondant, I added a little lemony shape for her mouth. I just lined it up with the template and then I shaped her nose. It's quite pointed and it has the two indents on the side. She has pretty deep nostrils. I just used my template as a guide for shaping these. I will link the full face below as well. To help me hide the seam at the tops and side of her nose, I just added a little more buttercream and smoothed it all down. I put that back in the fridge to chill so that the fondant could really harden up with the buttercream. And then I rolled out some fondant. I added a little bit of ivory food coloring to and draped that over the face working really quickly to define the nose because it's so pointed, I didn't want it to break through the fondant. So I'm going around the eyes and the mouth, just trying to get all that air out from the top and then going quickly around the sides to smooth the fondant down. Once it was nice and covered, I cut away the excess at the bottom using my pizza cutter. Using some of my excess fondant, I rolled it into a ball and I'm using that to kind of buff over the cake and to help me get that fondant extra smooth. And then using my fondant tool, I'm going in and putting the nostrils back into the nose, just redefining around it. And I also added the line through her lips and a little smile on either side. I'm trying and kind of failing to show you a close up of what everything looked like. You can see right underneath on either side of her smile. I also just kind of press that in a little bit to create like a dimpled look ever so slightly. I use my balling tool to deepen where the eyes are going to go. And then added a little oval of white fondant on either side. And I just used my template as a guide to make sure I had the right size. I used a piping tip to cut out two circles of light brown fondant and this is where she starts to look a little bit hilarious because she doesn't have hair yet or really any other features so she looks like a potato person. I cut my template almost completely in half so that I could just better get around the nose and just like the mouth and nose I'm using that fondant tool to mark in the eyebrows. I rolled out snakies of dark brown fondant and then set them in place using a little bit of shortening so I could move them around without the color staining. 
I moved her over to a board that I had already covered in fondant. She was chilled so I could quickly pick her up without messing anything up. I used some blue fondant and my template and I'm going to start with the hair that shows through like that's on the back of her head if that makes sense. I'm just marking in approximately how low it's going to go. I trim that down and then using my fondant tool I'm marking in some hair texture. I'm adding more of that blue fondant onto the tops and side of her head. Again, just using my template as a guide for where it should sit. Coraline has this very cute little bob. So for the very front of the hair, I placed a little more of that blue fondant just so it like stays propped up. You can remove that once the hair dries or you can just leave it, doesn't really matter. And then I'm using my fondant tool to mark in some hair texture. I did the same thing for the other side and it took me a little bit just to finagle it to how I wanted it, but it looked something like this when I was done. Using some brown food coloring that I mixed with a little bit of food grade alcohol and a really crappy paintbrush that I have to replace, I started to go around the iris with a really like direct dark color and then I'm just pulling that into the center kind of watering it down as I go with the food grade alcohol because I want just the outer rim to be the darkest and I want it to stay quite fair as it goes towards the middle. Once I was done with the painting, I added a black ball of fondant into the middle for the pupil and then two little catch lights in either eye. With some really thin snakies of black fondant, I'm just framing the top and side of her eye. I mixed some pink and purple food coloring with a little bit of white food coloring, and I'm painting that onto her little pout and just carrying that on in a very thin line for her smile on either side. With some black color dust and the back of my paintbrush, I started to dot some freckles on there. I added a teardrop of that ivory fondant on either side for her ears and then used my fondant tool to just indent the middle. At this point, I'm going to start working on my board. I have some light blue food coloring that I mixed with a little bit of food grade alcohol and I'm going to start stippling that all over the board. With a darker shade of blue, I'm doing the same thing but I'm leaving like a little halo around Coraline's head of that light blue. With an even darker color of blue, I'm just mainly keeping that to the very outer edge of the board. To help the colors blend, it really helps if you go back in with just straight up clear food grade alcohol and just go in between where each color meets. It really helps it blend together so there aren't really stark lines. And then to finish it off, I'm going over it with a clean paper towel to help it blend even more. I have some white food coloring on a fluffy paintbrush and I'm splattering that on the board. I've been doing this a lot lately and I promise it won't be for every single cake. <laughs> Using some of that darker blue food coloring mixture I have, I'm going to paint Coraline's hair as well. So if you got any little splatters on there like I did, you can just wash them away. For the moon, I have this circle of white fondant that I cut out and then using my balling tool, I'm just going around and just leaving the very edge untouched to have more of a buttony shape. I used a piping tip to cut out the four circles and then place that on my board. To help the moon blend in with the vibe of the board, like that watercolory look, I mixed together my blue food coloring with my white food coloring and I'm just gonna paint it. I did go off of a picture so I will link it below.
For Coraline's hair clip, I just used a mold I had for some gem shapes and I'm just laying that down on the side. It doesn't look just like the one she wears in the movie, but it was close enough for me. And then to finish it all off, I have this little dragonfly template and I cut that out of some white fondant. I did about four or five of these guys just for like the paper decorations that were in her room. I really like this little detail, so I wanted to throw that in there. And this was the final result, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know that most of my Halloween videos this year have been Tim Burton, but I can't even really care because I love them all so much. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I have a whole Halloween playlist if you want to check that out, and I will see you in the next video.